In this video, we're going to start looking at titrations in practice, starting with strong acid versus strong base titration. So this is the point in the topic at which you would be starting your practicals, starting practicing that um, technique of titrations and getting them really accurately and building up that skill. But um, thankfully, most of you have had experience of that at GCSE, if not um, in tutorials with Ms. Stewart. Um, but we're going to have a wee look at um, a few different titrations. Um, for this one, I have videoed myself doing it and um, others, we will, we will watch different videos to help us get our heads around how do you do these titrations and what then can we do with the results of them. So the first titration we're going to look at is standardising a sodium hydroxide solution. So in other words, we are going to have a standard solution of sulfuric acid and uh, one that we know the concentration of. So you can see there um, the concentration of our sulfuric acid solution is 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed. And what we're going to do, do is titrate it against a solution of sodium hydroxide. And from our titration results, we're going to be able to work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide. In other words, standardizing the sodium hydroxide solution, because remember standard mean a standard solution is one of known concentration. So for standardizing a solution, we're finding out the, the concentration of it. So your equipment um, is listed there uh, and the chemicals as well. And the indicator that we're going to use in this example is phenyl fouling. Over on page 25, you have your method and your results table. And I just encourage you that as you're watching this video, um, follow along with the method and follow along with the results. So follow the method and the results. And when it gets to the stage, it'll be a wee while through the video, but when it gets to the stage where I am filling in the results table on the board, please do write in the results in, in the table at the bottom of page 25. Um, so I'm going to play the video now of me demonstrating this practical. So before we start our titration, we must prepare our apparatus um, and I'm starting here by rinsing my burette. I do that first of all with deionized water by partly filling it um, and pouring some out into a waste beaker and rinsing the jet also by opening the tap. Then you want to rinse it with the solution you're filling it with. Uh, with the burette, it's always a standard solution, the solution you know the concentration of. And again, I partly fill it, um, remove it by uh, pouring into a waste beaker and rinsing the jet as well. I'm now filling the burette with my standard solution, that's sulfuric acid, so you overfill it um, and then uh, make sure you fill the jet by opening the tap and um, release that until the level is zero, the bottom of the meniscus is um, at zero. Now what we're doing is rinsing our pipette, um, so first of all with deionized water, sucking up a little bit of deionized water, um, again rinsing the inside of the pipette with that and removing all of the water. Um, and then you want to rinse it next with the solution you're going to be filling it with, um, in this case is sodium hydroxide, again um, partly filling it um, and rinsing the inside of the pipette with the sodium hydroxide um, and pouring it into a waste beaker. Then what you want to do is you want to use your pipette to measure out exactly 25 centimetres cubed and you've got to be exact about this otherwise um, your titrations will be different and you'll have different amounts in there which will require then different number of moles of your sulfuric acid from your burette. Um, so you use the pipette filler to draw the solution up until it's um, on the exact mark. Again, the bottom of the meniscus needs to be on that zero mark um, with no air bubbles and release those into your conical flasks. So now that we have our titration prepared in the sense that our burette is filled, or you'll see from the previous video that I filled my three conical flasks using the pipette. And um, so let's have a chat about what is in uh, what apparatus. So our burette currently contains our standard solution. We always put our standard solution in the burette, the one we know the concentration of. And that's our sulfuric acid. We know that it's 0.05 molar. 
Okay, then what um, you saw me do was I um, pipetted out my sodium hydroxide into my three conical flasks, adding 25 centimeters cubed in each. Okay, so the apparatus essentially is good to go. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to add our indicator. And um, so our indicator that we're using is phenolphthalein. Um, and we're going to add that to our conical flask. So have a think, what color would you expect it to turn when we add it? Remember, we've got sodium hydroxide in here. Um, so yes, it turns our nice pink color that's consistent with phenolphthalein in an alkali. So we'll just add a few drops to each. My rough, my first accurate, and my second accurate. Okay, so those are then good to go. Um, so what we've got here is our burette, and our burette is filled um, to zero. Okay, zero at the top, and it, it contains 50 centimeters cubed. Okay, it's 50 centimeter cubed burette. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our first, our rough titration. And with this, we don't need to be very careful. Okay, we just um, titrate until we see the color change. Now, obviously, you don't want it to be, um, you know, do it too quickly or look away. And um, because remember, our rough must be greater than our first and second accurate but it is to be no more than two centimetres bigger. Um, so we want to make sure we're being somewhat careful. Generally, in terms of, of manoeuvring this, I'll turn this around. Um, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see numbers or not. Um, in terms of um, using the burette, we tend to hold the conical flask in your writing hand. So I'm right-handed, so I'm holding it with my right hand here. That's because it's easier to swirl, actually, with your uh, the hand you write with. I, if I try to swirl with my left hand, for some reason, it just doesn't uh, it doesn't seem to work too well. Um, and then you operate the tap with your non-writing hand. Um, so I'm going to put this underneath the jet of the burette, and we'll just open up the tap to add the sulfuric acid in. Okay. So you don't need to do this particularly carefully. Um, you can just um, add it quite quickly, add the sulfuric acid quite quickly. Okay. You can stop every now and again to give it um, a, a good swirl. And when you start to see that color fade of the pink color, you can maybe add it a little bit more slowly. Remember, we don't want this to be too inaccurate. Okay, oh, sorry. Added a wee bit extra there, hopefully that will not um, uh, interfere with our results. So let's have a wee look at this. Um, so we can see the colour change is now complete. It has changed completely from pink, pink to colourless. And what I want to do is have a look at my burette reading. And that will tell me um, how much sulfuric acid that I have added. So I'll just turn it around slightly. You want to get an eye level and you want to measure it to the bottom of the meniscus. Okay. Um, so from my view, that is at 19.8. So we'll write that into our results table. I've got that on the board. I've just blanked the screen. So give me one wee second. Okay, so this is your results table at the bottom of page 25. So hopefully you can see that okay on the screen. Our initial burette reading, and we should have written that in before, but that was at 0.0, .0. okay? You've got to record your results to one decimal place. And that's because that's the smallest measurement of our uh, burette. So you can see, uh, well, you probably can't see from the video, but the readings um, are, are divided into 10 separations between zero and one, for example. Um, so it's to one decimal place. And um, so even though, yes, we could say that's right on zero, it needs to be 0, 0.0, okay? Our final burette reading then, as I said, is at 19.8 centimeters cubed. The tighter then um, is the difference between your final burette rating and the initial burette rating. So um, you could write that in if you want. Final burette rating minus initial burette rating. Okay, so you can write that in there. Um, so obviously for our tighter, for our rough titration, um, it's just 19.8 minus zero. So that's going to be 19.8. Okay, so I know roughly my um, end point is achieved at 19.8 centimetres cube, but now I want to do it a little bit more accurately to find out what is the exact volume that that changes at. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this away and then I'll just put it down here. 
and take my first accurate. Now, um, at this point you have a bit of a choice. What you can do is refill it back up to zero or we can just continue, okay? Um, with this, I'm just going to continue on because if you think about it, um, I have 50 centimeters cubed in total. So say for example, our rough was um, above 25 centimeters cubed. Then I would need to refill because I have less than half of my solution left. But um, I have more than half of my solution left and my accurate should be smaller than the rough. And so I don't need to refill. Um, so my initial burette reading then is just going to be the same as the final burette reading of the previous um, example. So that my initial burette reading is 19.8. So that's 19.8. Okay. So write that into your notes and then we'll go again. So what we want to do this time is we want to um, start to open up the burette, get it flowing, um, but we want to stop a little bit before the end point. So we might do that sometime somewhere between um, two and five centimetres cubed. For example, I might stop at about five centimetres cubed. So um, if you don't go up to zero again, you need to have a wee think. Um, so 19.8, if it was the same again, I'm trying to do some fast maths in my head, that would be at 39.6. That's when we're expecting our end point if it was the same as the rough. So 39.6, I'm probably gonna stop it then um, at about 34.6, so around maybe 35 centimeters cubed, okay? So maybe turn it around so I can see the numbers a wee bit better. Okay. So you can get it quite going quite quickly until maybe about five centimeters cube within your um within your your rough tiger okay so you can see it's still um, pretty pink but i'm going to start adding it a little bit more slowly so you can have a steady flow of drops hopefully you can see that okay but you're adding a little, a little bit more slowly so again we're expecting that it won't go above 39.6 it needs to be smaller than my rough titration. So hopefully you can see the pink color is starting to fade. I'm gonna stop it at that point. So hopefully you can see that pink is less intense if I compare it to this one. Hopefully you can see that the, the, um, the difference in the intensity. What we might do at this stage is just do a quick rinse around. So what you can do is get your conical flask and just do a quick rinse. What that means is that any of the solution that's been added from the burette and um, that has splashed around the outside, that that then gets added. And what you can see is that that's actually made a really big difference. I'm not sure if it's completely colorless yet, but we'll give it a good swirl. Because what can happen is some of the sulfuric acid can splash around the edges and not be in with the sodium hydroxide. Um, so if we use a little bit of deionized water, we can um, change that. I think there is a slight, if I get down at eye level, a slight color of um, pink. The other thing we can do is you can see there's a little drop at the end of the burette here. And I can add a squirt of my um, deionized water. Again, that's okay to do because um, yes, you are essentially diluting the solution, but you're not changing the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that you originally had and the number of sulfuric acid um, moles that you have added from your burette. So you can do that. Don't know whether you can see from the video, but there is still a hint of pink. So I'm going to have to add maybe one drop. And what you can do at this stage is turn it so that there is even just a drop on the end and if you're a bit worried that you're going to add too much, I did add it there and it did drop down. What you can do is get it so it's almost sitting at the bottom of the burette and then just do a, a small little squirt with your deionized water because sometimes we can um, turn the tap the wrong way and add in too much. It's really hard at this point because the pink colour is getting very, very pale. But if I look at it from this angle, I think it's still there. So we may need to add one more drop. You can see there it's hanging at the end. I'm going to just add it with my deionized water so that I don't add in too much. Give it a good swirl. Maybe rinse around the edges of the conical flask. Believe it or not, I think it's 
still a tiny bit pink. So I'll add one more drop, see how that goes. Hmm, hard to tell. If I rinse around the edges, there is no pink color there left now I think I am the previous ones there was always that hint of pink so let's have a look at our final burette reading now that we're eventually there and um, so looking at our reading at eye level we're at 38.4 okay so our final burette reading is 38.4 so our tighter then is the difference between our final burette reading and our initial burette reading. And um, so to do that, we're doing 38.4 minus 19.8. And that should give us, doing some fast maths again, 19.4, um, 18.6. That should give us 18.6. Let me just double check that. Yep, that should work. Okay, um, so our tighter is 18.6 centimeters cubed. Okay, so what you can see is that it fits the criteria in that it's less than the rough titration, but it's within two centimeters cubed of it. So really we didn't want this value to be any lower than 17.8. Okay, so it needed to be no more than two less than our rough. Um, Okay, so it's 18.6, so that um, fits the bill well. Okay, um, so let's do our second accurate, and um, we'll see if we can do it a little bit more quickly. Um, so what I will need to do is um, I'll need to fill up my burette, because now I've um, less than my um, accurate titration left, and so I'll need to refill that, so I'll do that quickly. So now my burette is filled up again, I'm ready to go with my second accurate titration. Um, so I want it to be, uh, hopefully it will be within 0 0.1 of 18.6. So again, um, we'll add quite quickly, maybe to around 14 or 15 centimetres cubed. Um, and then we will um, add more drop wise. Um, so I filled it right up to the top again. So my initial burette reading is 0, 0.0 again. Um, some people prefer to um, uh, to fill it up to zero each time just to make it easier to work out the values and that's absolutely fine. It's just obviously a little bit more work. That's us at um, 13 now. We'll start to add it a wee bit more dropwise. You can see that uh, pink colour is fading. It's 17 now. it at this point and make sure I've got everything in my conical flask sufficiently rinsed I still need a few more drops get 
very, very pale now. A bit quicker than the, the last time we might be at colourless. So let me have a look at the reading. Sort of an in-between value, but if I get exactly at eye level, I think that's on 18.5. Um, so let's write that into our uh, notes. So it's at 18.5. Okay, and um, so our titer, obviously, the difference between final burette rating and initial burette rating is going to be 18.5. So you can see that we have achieved two concordant results, two results that are within 0 0.1 centimeters cubed of each other. Um, and that is accurate enough for your results. If we got, say, for example, even 18.3 or 18.4, we would have to repeat it again until we got two results that were within 0 0.1 of each other. And the last thing then to do is to work out your average titer. So your average titer, remember, is just of uh, the average between your first and second accurate. You do not include the rough titration of it. Um, so your average titer is going to be, um, if I put AT, that's going to be 18.6 plus 18.5 over 2, um, because there's two readings there. That is going to give us 18.55 centimetres cubed. And that's okay to write in. Um, you can have it to two decimal places. We can't have our actual readings in the table to two decimal places because our burette doesn't do something that accurate. It doesn't do measurements that accurate. But because our two accurates are 0 0.1 apart, the average between the two, it wouldn't be right to round it up to 18.6 because that doesn't give us a true value of the average. Um, so you can write in this case 18.55 centimetres cubed. Um, so that is our average setter. And what we'll then do is use that result in our calculations. So now that you've watched the video of me demonstrating this practical, please make sure that you have the results table at the bottom of page 25 filled in. Um, so you can pause the video if you need to. Um, and at the bottom, you can show your working out of how you calculate the average titer. Um, that's calculated from the two accurate titers. We ignore the rough titer and we calculate the average from the two accurate titers. Um, so make sure you ignore the rough. And we will be using this average titer now to calculate the concentration of our sodium hydroxide solution. So over in the next page, we have our calculation for um, calculating the concentration of sodium hydroxide in structured steps. Um, it's important to know that all titration calculations start with the average titer um, because that's what we have worked out and we're now going to use that value to calculate other values. Um, so let's work through the questions as they are, um, and then I'll give you a bit of practice in this as well. Um, so the first question is state the colour change at the end point. So I think um, from the video we've definitely seen um, that it's pink to colourless. Took a while at uh, times, but we got there eventually. So the colour change was pink to colourless, and that's because we had sodium hydroxide in the, in the conical flask. It's an alkali, and phenolphthalein is pink in alkali, and then it turns colourless on the addition of sulfuric acid. Next question is calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid. Just remember where that is. That is in the burette. So really what we're using here is our average titer. I've written that up at the top um, just so that uh, that really stands out in, the, in your questions because that is, that's where we start with any titration calculation. So number of moles, we calculate that using the equation N equals CV. Hopefully that's uh, familiar from before Christmas. The concentration of our sulfuric acid was 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cube. That's the one we knew the concentration of. The volume then is our average titer. Um, now remember, we need to convert that from centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. So we could write that just off to the side here. 18.55 centimeters cubed divided by 1,000 is... 0 0.01855 decimeters cubed. 
So put that into your equation, 0 0.01855. And if you put that into your calculator, um, try putting this into the calculator as we go along, that should come out as 9.275 times 10 to the minus 4 moles, or 0 0.0009275 moles. And you can write it in either form. Next question asks us to write the balance symbol equation for the reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. This is something that you should be able to do by now yourself um, from your GCSE chemistry. When an acid reacts with a metal hydroxide, so we've got sulfuric acid here reacting with sodium hydroxide, we produce a salt and water. Um, the salt is named from the um, the alkali and the acid. The first name comes from the alkali, um, from the metal hydroxide, and that's sodium. And the second name comes from the acid, but that changes its ending. Um, sulfuric changes to sulfate. So the salt here is sodium sulfate, and we get water. You need to know those general types of equations um, in order to write equations for these. So if you need to write that general equation, uh, write it down somewhere, not necessarily here, but um, possibly somewhere else where it stands out. That's really important because, um, for example, if you didn't use water as your side product, if you use hydrogen, um, then you could struggle to balance your equation. And the balancing of the equation is actually really important if we are to work out the correct number of moles in the correct ratio between our acid and our alkali. So on that note, let's balance this equation. So sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to give sodium sulfate plus water. The formula of sodium sulfate is Na2SO4 because the valency of sodium is 1 and the valency of sulfate is 2. Um, and so to balance this equation, we need to put a 2 in front of our NaOH to give us two sodiums. And then if we have a look at our hydrogens and our oxygens, if you look in particular at your hydrogens, we've got uh, two here, and now we've got two in our sodium hydroxide as well. So that's a total of four hydrogens, but we only have two on the right, and so we need to put a two in front of our water. In part four, then, we want to use this equation that we've just written, and we want to work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 25 centimetres cubed. Really, what we're thinking here is, well, how many moles were there in the conical flask? Because that's how many number of moles reacted with the given number of moles of sulfuric acid. So we know how many moles of sulfuric acid that we've added from the burette and that allows us using our balancing number ratio, our stoichiometric ratio as we talked about before, that's basically just the balancing number ratio, we can work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that that reacted with. So if I even write out just the left hand side of the equation, because that's all I'm going to need to use. In part two, we worked out that we had 9.275 times 10 to the minus four moles of sulfuric acid. That's the number of moles, the average number of moles that we added from our burette of our sulfuric acid. How can we then work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide? Well, we simply use our equation. Once converted to moles, we can transfer this to anywhere in the equation using our stoichiometric ratio, our balancing number ratio. The ratio is 1 to 2, which means I need to multiply the number of moles of sulfuric acid by 2 to get me the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that would react with that number of moles of sulfuric acid. Um, and so if you put that into your calculator, 9.275 times 10 to the minus 4 moles, that should get you 0 0.001855 moles. Or it may come out in your calculator as 1.855 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So now that we have the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, we also have the volume of uh, sodium hydroxide in that we know we pipetted 25 centimetres cubed out into our conical flask and that's given to you there as well. So um, if you think what we did practically, we pipetted 25 centimetres cubed into each conical flask. And um, so now we know the number of moles, we can calculate the concentration.
And to do that, we use the equation C equals N over V, concentration equals number of moles over volume. The number of moles we just worked out in part four, um, so that's 1.855 times 10 to the minus three moles. And our volume is 25 centimetres cubed, which in decimetres cubed, remember, we need to divide by a thousand. That gets us 0 0.025 decimetres cubed. Put that into our equation and you can see that will give us the units of moles per decimeter cubed. If you put that into your calculator that should come out as 0 0.0742 moles per decimeter cubed and that's our final answer. Um, so carrying out our titration, working out what our average titer was of um, the amount of sulfuric acid added to my sodium hydroxide to neutralize it and um, we can then work out according to our equation that the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.0742 moles per decimeter cubed. So what I'd like you to do now is to have a go at exercise five to put this into practice and to try some titration calculations yourself. Um, in the exam, quite often these are structured, so they are broken down into different parts um, to sort of guide your calculations, although sometimes I think that can confuse things a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go through question one with you now. Um, the key thing with these calculations is to get your balance symbol equation right. Um, if you don't get that right, if it's not balanced correctly, um, then your calculation may be wrong if the balancing numbers um, are not correct. So if we have a look at question number one here, um, we are told that 25 centimetres cubed of 0 0.1 moles per decimetre cubed sodium hydroxide solution required 23.5 centimetres cubed of dilute hydro hydrochloric acid for neutralisation. Calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. Um, so this again is the type of equation, not all of the questions on this page will be this type of equation, um, in which case you'll have to think about what your products are, um, say they're a metal carbonate and so on. But in this case, we have a metal hydroxide reacting with an acid and that gives us a salt and water. Um, so let's have a think about what our salt is. We've got sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. So the first name comes from the metal um, and we ignore the hydroxide part. So the first, um, first part of the name is sodium. And the second part of the name of the salt comes from the acid and hydrochloric acid changes its ending to chloride. So it's sodium chloride. Let's have a think about what the formula of sodium chloride is. Well, that's just simply written from sodium, which is Na, uh, which has a valency of one. And chloride is just the ion of chlorine um, with a valency of one also because it's in group seven. So that's just NaCl plus water is H2. And if you have a quick look at that equation, it is actually already balanced. You have equal numbers of each atom on either side of the equation. So do check that your equation is balanced before you proceed with your calculation. As I have said to you before, the way I would normally do this is write the information that I have underneath the relevant part of the equation. And then we know where to start with our calculation. So we are told that we have 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide. You're best probably to convert that to decimeters cubed at the start um, because that's what we'll need to use it. Remember, um, we need our volume and our concentration units to match. So divide by a thousand, that should give you 0 0.025 decimeters cubed. Okay, your concentration then is given to you as 0 0.1 uh, moles per decimeter cubed. You can include the zeros if you wish. Um, and then we're also told that we um, require 23.5 centimetres cubed of our hydrochloric acid, which again, probably convert to decimeter cubed at this stage is the easiest thing to do. So that will be 0 0.0235 decimeters cubed. And the question asks us to calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. So that's where I would put my question mark. What is the concentration? So where I start my calculation is where I've been given two bits of information. So be that um, a mass and an RFM in those type of equations. But here we're going to be using our N equals CV. Um, so if we want to work out the number of moles, we need to 
have a concentration value and we need to have a volume value. Um, so therefore we start at our sodium hydroxide because I know both of those bits of information. Our concentration is 0 0.1, our volume is 0 0.025, remember using your decimeter cube value, and that gets you 0 0.0025 moles or uh, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Once we've got the number of moles, we can bring that anywhere else in the equation. Um, so we can bring it over to our hydrochloric acid um, using our balancing number ratio um, or our stoichiometric ratio. We can see in this case it's just 1 to 1, our ratio. So that means that 0 0.0025 moles of sodium hydroxide will react with 0 0.0025 moles of hydrochloric acid. Again, you might set yours out slightly differently, um, but hopefully it will be a similar method. And then finally, we are asked to calculate the concentration of the sulfuric, the hydrochloric acid. Sorry, um, So concentration is number of moles over volume, C equals N over V. Our number of moles is 0 0.0025. And our volume is 0 0.0235. Decimeters cubed, again, remembering to use your um, decimeter cubed um, unit. And if you put that into your calculator, it should work out as 0 0.106 moles per decimeter cubed. So that's the way you want to set out these calculations or something similar. Um, always starting by working out the number of moles of the thing you've been given two values for um, using your equation n equals cv. And bringing that over according to your ratio to the thing you're trying to work out and then calculating your concentration by c equals n over v. So I'd like you to have a go at questions two, three, four and five um, and that will finish our work for this lesson.